Fonica Pro is gonna be a subscription soon. But before you freak out and do some yelling, some typing in the comments, it is important to note that it'll also be available as a one-time purchase. So what is the difference between the two? The subscription and the one-time purchase of Final Cut Pro. And with the useful new features that were mentioned in Apple's recent press release, which we're gonna be going over in this video, will they be available for all Final Cut Pro users? Even the ones who buy Final Cut Pro as a one-time purchase. I'm Dylan John, and let me break down everything quickly and in an easy to understand way. In a nutshell, Apple just released some info that on January 28th of this year, they'll be releasing something called Apple Creator Studio. It is basically a collection of apps that you probably know about, like Compressor, Logic Pro, Pixelmator Pro, Keynote, Pages, Numbers, and of course, Final Cut Pro. And they'll be bundled into a subscription model of $12.99 per month or $129 per year that will quote unquote, empower all creators. You probably have many questions bubbling around in your mind, likely bubbling in a sea of frustration and anger. So let's try and clear things up a bit. Let's start with the most important in my opinion. If you own Final Cut Pro right now, you will continue to get updates. And you might be saying, yeah, but with these new features that you're gonna be going over, will I be getting those too? I'm pretty certain that you will because of what Apple says here. One-time purchase Mac users and Apple Creator Studio subscribers can experience blazing fast performance with Apple Silicone for the most demanding workflows and get into the creative flow faster than ever with the new on-device intelligent features that make video creation effortless and easy. They specifically are mentioning here that one-time purchasers will have the new on-device intelligent features. And the features that we're gonna go over are intelligent features. They're pretty dang cool. So then what is the difference? Why would someone subscribe if they can just buy Final Cut Pro once and then have all of the new features? Well, I'm guessing here because the subscription model hasn't been released yet, but judging based on this line in Apple's press release, a one-time purchase will still be available, but access to some of the premium content is available only to Apple Creator Studio subscribers. So I'm assuming that by putting the wording premium content, they mean things more like built-in titles, transitions, perhaps generators, maybe even more sound effects. You might be thinking that I'm being overly optimistic here, but I would assume that they wouldn't really use the word content if they meant new features. Content likely points to like creative assets like transitions, titles, templates, photos, or other built-in resources rather than major feature updates to the software itself. So what are these new features that I've been blabbering about? And are they anything to get excited about? In my opinion, yes. Yes, they are. The first one that we're gonna go over is called Beat Detection. Once the update drops, Final Cut Pro will automatically be able to analyze your music, which will map out song parts, bars, and beats in a matrix looking grid here. For those of you who have trouble cutting to the beat, this is gonna be a godsend for you because you can just snap your trim points to these beat markers so you know that every cut is right on the beat. If you're a little more advanced though and cutting to the beat is no biggie for you, then I think this will really come in handy when you need to quickly rearrange parts of your songs. So if you have like a 30 second vertical video but a three minute song, this should let you quickly see where you need to cut and splice together your music so it sounds like the song fits the 30 second video perfectly. These next two new features are what I'm most excited about personally. As you probably know, one of the most annoying parts of video creation is having to search for parts of clips that you need for your video. If you have a huge library with tons of different clips, it can seemingly take forever. It is incredibly time consuming but Apple is making it less so with these two new features. Visual search appears to let you just simply type in a word or phrase of an object or an action that's in your footage and it'll bring up those clips or parts of clips for your video. This is crazy useful if it ends up working well. So using this picture as an example, which kind of looks like uh, some Squid Games contestants had some time off. If you're creating a video about your trip somewhere and you wanna quickly find all the different shots of you and your friends climbing stairs, you just use visual search, type in climbing stairs, and it'll instantly bring up all the parts of your clips that you're looking for. So it doesn't matter if you have like terabytes of footage in your library, which would be intense, but nevertheless, you'll be able to find what you quickly need by just using visual search, naming that object or action that you're looking for, 
and it'll show up. I'm really stoked about this one. By the way, I'm gonna be creating a lot more videos on these new features, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. There's gonna be a lot of useful tricks in these upcoming videos that'll help you to create better videos faster. The other new feature is called Transcript Search, and Apple says that you can now grab the perfect sound bite. No more sifting through hours of footage. Transcript Search analyzes speech to instantly find spoken phrases, whether by exact match or by related words. This is another one that if it works well, will save us so much time while creating videos. Like imagine if you shot 10 hours of footage for a vlog where you're talking to the camera nearly the whole time. How amazing would it be if you just simply typed in something like history of racing and instantly you get all the parts from that 10 hours of talking head footage where you're talking about the history of racing. As you know, right now, you would have to just listen to all of your footage to find what you need. But with this update that's coming out, you could just type in, it was a great time, <laughs> and then it'll bring up all the parts of your video where you literally say, it was a great time. Or perhaps if you had something that had to do with astrology, you just type in astrology and it'll bring up you talking about Scorpio and Aries and all that garbage. I just call it garbage. I didn't mean that. To those of you that like astrology, I apologize. That's your thing, whatever. Who am I to judge? Apple is also releasing something called Montage Maker on Fonica Pro for the iPad. And it apparently analyzes and edits together a dynamic video based on the best visual moments within your footage with the ability to change the pacing cut to a music track and intelligently reframe horizontal videos to vertical with auto crop. I assume it's going to be something that um, perhaps can give you like a very, very rough timeline that you can then go from there and tweak things a little bit better. The fact that it seemingly lets you rearrange your clips and change the pacing of your video seems pretty cool if it works well, but it could also turn out to be a feature for beginner editors who don't really care about how their video turns out and they just want to click a few buttons and be done. So wrapping this up, if you own Fonica Pro now, you will likely still get updates, including these new features that we just went over, but you might not have access to the new and updated titles and transitions or whatever they mean by premium content that Apple will be releasing with this upcoming subscription model. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on everything though. So let me know what you think of the Apple Creator Studio that comes out on January 28th and what you think of these new features that are coming out to FCP as well. As always, thank you so much for watching and give this video a watch because YouTube thinks you'll like it and have a great rest of your day.